Welcome back to the wizard shop. Let's take a look at this really sweet beetles. You guys know I love beetles. And this one's no exception. It's beautiful. Let's check this thing out. So you guys have seen this car in the shop for quite a while. It's been in the background. It's a 1966 Volkswagen Beetle with a 1300cc engine. Originally it wasn't in here for repairs. It was in here for modification. We're going to take a look around this Beetle and see some of the small modifications we did do. Although originally we were going to do major, massive modifications. But before we dive into that, let's go ahead and look around this thing. It's it's so nice, guys. It looks like a matchbox car, a little bitty matchbox car. It is very clean. It is a little bit dusty from it sitting at home. It's also been sitting in here. So but we don't detail the cars. We leave that to the customer to do because that can be a very, very particular situation where a customer wants it done a certain way. You need to make sure it's done that way. We leave that to the professional detailers. It has very, very sweet wheels. It's called Speedwell London, BRM Speedwell. And they look amazing. They really look good on this car. I also like that it has small wheels and tires up front and much larger ones in the rear. It gives it a kind of a hot rod look. I come around to the back. It just has these little guys for bumpers, which looks really good. You can see it says 1300 on there has the dual exhaust coming out the back, which is stock, standard, although the muffler on here is not stock. The glass is all in good shape. The paint has been repainted before. It's not the original paint. I don't know if it's original color or not, but it has been repainted, and they did a very good job. You guys saw a video we did not too long ago on a white Volkswagen Beetle, and there was lots wrong with it. This one doesn't have lots wrong with it. It actually doesn't have much of anything wrong with it. Like I said, it was here for some major modifications. Let's go ahead and take a look inside. Let Mrs. Wizard guide you through the interior. So welcome back, ladies and gents. And here we are. This is, I'm just stunned. I'm almost speechless. This thing is in such amazing condition. Not a lot going on in a Volkswagen bug, but what we do have is in great shape. It does have the original Volkswagen AM radio. Nothing's been change converted there. Has this simple little ashtray. Ooh, sorry about that, there's a big squeak. Again, never looks like it's been used and you can tell there's no smell of cigarette in the cabin at all. Simple little emergency lever and then the two gauges. Gas and speedometer. Not a whole lot, not even a tack. And being that this is a stick, you don't even get a tachometer. We can see it does say 46,000. Not sure if that's 146 but I bet it's just the real 46 because this thing is such mint condition. Just have the beautiful emblem on the middle of the steering wheel and a lovely horn ring around as well. As we look the floor, the carpet, I'm betting that that has been replaced. That looks too perfect to be from 1966. Door panels, they're ivory, looking really, really, really good. The vinyl seats are amazing as well. Headliner matches. We've got just a whole compilation of excellent, excellent in throughout this vehicle. You can see that we've got a little bit of staining marking on the visor, but it's not overly bloated like we've seen in previous cars. And as we move our way back, this thing is such cherry condition, which does match the outside as well. We do see a little bit, looks like maybe the piece of trim needs to be added to the back hatch area, back by the engine, but that is it. This back seat is truly phenomenal. I mean, there's, there's just nothing wrong. As we look at the driver's door panel, even the elastic on the door is not stretched out. It's still very, very good condition. So this thing's amazing. Let's get this up thing up in the air. I gotta see what it looks like underneath. I don't know about you guys, but the exhaust on this thing sounds amazing. It's not too loud, but it's not too quiet. It has a really beautiful rumble to it, a nice deep sound to it. It sounds really, really good. But one of the interesting things is 
This car originally came in here to have all of that dumped, like erased. What I mean by erased is EV. The customer looked into wanting to get an EV swap on this for one reason and one reason alone. This car sits a lot of the time and once or two or three times a month that his wife would like to take this out and drive it, it won't start. We all know about today's gasoline when it sits for a long time. What does it do? It evaporates and disappears. It's gone. You have to crank, 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 crank. And eventually it will start, but that is not a very pleasant experience every time you want to take this thing out. Maybe it'll start, maybe it won't. And finally you get tired of that. We did look into an EV swap from EV West, and although they make very good equipment and a very good swap kit, by the time you pay labor and all the parts, and the batteries are really the expensive thing, we were very quickly getting to 20 grand, 30 grand. The kit itself is almost 20 grand for the full, complete, whole shebang, everything included. Look it up. You Yourself, guys, look on EV West for the complete kit. It's like 17,999 something. And then you add multiple hours of labor. We got to remove the engine, run all new wiring, install battery packs. And we're not going to do that for 500 bucks, guys. It's very expensive. The customer started thinking about it, and it wasn't a matter of whether or not he could afford it. It was a matter of, is it worth it? And finally, he came to the realization, $30,000 possibly. And will he ever get that back in fuel savings? Will he ever get that ba back in selling it? Nope, not even half. It would have been something to do for novelty or to just delete the whole idea of gas stations out of this car's life. But finally, he decided, car wizard, I, I just don't think I want to spend that kind of money. If it was 10, 15, 20 grand, yeah, I, I'd do it but it cost that much just to get the kit. He said, I'll tell you what, just figure out why it has these issues with starting and then fix it and we'll just take it as is. It's a good car, there's nothing wrong with it except for this issue when it sits a long time, it doesn't want to start. And that could be said for any carbureted car with today's gasoline when it sits a long time, you're gonna have this issue. So let's go ahead and get the hood open, check out the engine bay and see what we've done in there. There's the beautiful, beautiful engine. It's in very good shape. We didn't have to do a whole lot to this thing. The generator, all this stuff was working fine. What we did was we put a new carburetor on. The old one just had varnish from gas from sitting a long time. These things are so cheap, fully brand new. I can't even rebuild the old one for half the cost of what it takes to just buy a whole new one. So, it has a brand new carburetor on it that took care of all that issue, and there is something missing here. I'm going to give you guys a second to figure out what's missing. If you guess the fuel pump, you are correct. We have a block-off plate there. This has been converted to an electric fuel pump. It also has some additive in the fuel tank to solve the sitting issue with the fuel system. Let's go ahead and show you what we added to the fuel tank. Then we'll look at up front in the trunk. I'll show you guys a few other things up there. So I'm gonna test you guys' knowledge of air-cooled Beetles again, being this is a 1966. We just did a walk around of the car. Did you guys see the place to fill up with fuel? No, you didn't, because it's not visible. Every time you fill up with gas, you always have to open the front bonnet. I'll show you why. The reason why is the filler neck and the filler cap is right here. There's no little magic doorway or anything on the side of the car. In these years, you open the front hood or bonnet, whatever you want to call it. There you go, you put gas in it. One thing we have added to the gas, speaking of gas, is stable storage. This is what actually Jay Leno uses on all of his cars because his cars do a lot of sitting. This car does a lot of sitting. In order to ensure that the fuel that they put in it stays fresh for months at a time, if it need be, without gumming up the brand new carburetor, we're sending along several bottles of this 
to the owner when he picks up the car. And each time they fill up with gas, they'll just add the proper amount of this to the fuel and fuel condition will no longer be an issue with starting. So we've eliminated that issue with this. And I'll show you guys a little bit of wiring and a few things we did to install the electric fuel pump right here. Here we have the fuel pump relay ran off of ignition power. And we also have an inertia switch. You guys have seen this on several other cars. I've done electric fuel pump conversions. You saw it on the Austin Healey that Hoovy has from Hoovy's Garage. I will never install an electric fuel pump on a person's vehicle without some sort of safety mechanism so that if they get into a rollover crash or just a crash in general, it doesn't sit there and spray gas all over them, especially if there's a fire. If this thing hits an impact, this will trigger and shut off the fuel pump. So now we have the relay and a safety device. Let's go ahead and get this thing up in the air. So we'll go ahead and check this thing out. No, obviously there's no radiator up here. But one thing I do want to show you guys is very interesting is this is before the Super Beetle era, which had McPherson strut front end. This has torsion bars. That's what this is called, torsion bar front end. As you can see, it has two little control arms, I guess you'd call them. And they hook to torsion steel kind of bars that are inside of here, torsion springs. And there's your shock absorber. That's it, it's pretty simple. These are very easy to adjust the ride height. As you can see right here, these are adjustable. You can loosen up these and move them where you want them. And you can raise and lower the vehicle. Very, very easy to do. Here's our steering gearbox, which is also very small and very simple. And obviously it's not power steering. You don't need it on this. Right here is our fuel pump. Two to three PSI is what the system needs for a carburetor. It's tucked up out of the way so it doesn't drag or hit anything. And it's very close to the fuel tank because these pumps don't pull from long distances very well. So you always need to locate them near the fuel tank, which we've done. And then it feeds all the way back through the normal fuel line that was already there to the engine. This has had disc brake conversion up front. You can see the empty spindles. You can see the empty stamp there. It's a very common name in aftermarket Volkswagen Beetle parts. So this has much better stopping power and very easy to work on. You don't have to fool around with drum brakes. Just change the pads out. Nothing loose there. One thing you'll notice right here is this cable. It's like that goes to the middle of the wheel. What, what's the purpose of that? That's your speedometer cable. It does not run off the transmission or the rear end or anything like that. It's off your front left wheel. As far as wheels and tires go, you can do whatever you want to this vehicle. Put giant off-road tires, little bitty tires. But the front left wheel always has to stay a stock size if you're wanting to keep an accurate speedometer. I'm sure you can put a gearbox or change some of the gearing or do different things or a different speedometer head to adjust for different sizes. But with the stock speedometer, you have to also have stock front left wheel, which means very likely both front wheels are going to have to be stock size. The rear wheels being so much bigger doesn't change the speedometer at all because it comes off of this wheel. This looks like a supercar, Mrs. Wizard. It does. I was looking at all that paneling. It's actually the body. Actually, the, the frame of this is the center portion here and across here. These are just floor pans that are welded in. And as we move our way back, this also is the frame. These are the frame horns. This, these two horns alone hold up the engine and transmission out in the middle of the air. There's no other items holding the engine or transmission up in this vehicle except for these two horns. Right here is the outer portion of the body. These are actually heater channels. It's hollow in there. If you listen, you can hear. 
There's actually air that flows through here and goes up to the front for your defrost and everything from the engine. We'll show you guys that here in a minute. These are in good condition. They're not rotted and rusted out. So as you can imagine, this sits in here kind of like a Porsche 911. And it's also air-cooled. And it's a four-cylinder, not a six-cylinder. The engine's back here. The transmission's right here with two tubes that come out. With a, There's not really a CV shaft. It kind of is like there's a boot here. And this that's called a swing axle. The whole thing moves up and down. You can see spider webs. Here's it's kind of like a blade. This is your control arm, I guess you could say. Trailing arm. And here's our spring, a torsion bar inside of here. And this whole thing just goes up and down and flexes only right here at this joint. That is why when we raise the vehicle that the wheels move inward. It's because there is nowhere other direction for them to go. That is their, their range of travel. These are heater boxes coming off the exhaust. And they run to this big pipe. And that runs up to the front and provides heat for the defroster and inside the cabin. That's how the heaters work on these. We still have the drum brakes in the rear, which is fine. And it has a parking brake here, parking brake cable. Looks like fairly new hoses. Everything's stocked back here as far as suspension. Nothing really has been changed. There's some very minor seepage here or there. We're not going to tear apart the whole car and fix all that. There's nothing to worry about at the moment. The valve covers were leaking very profusely, however. We did take those off. We did a valve adjustment, and then we put new valve cover gaskets on on both sides. And that took care of the massive leak that it had. Well, it wasn't massive, but it was a pretty good size. And then here's our aftermarket muffler that sounds so good. So we'll go ahead and lower this down and I'll show you the new way of starting this vehicle. It's a very great advantage. So no, we don't get to do an EV swap, unfortunately, but I don't blame him. It's almost really not worth it. But we did improve the starting on this dramatically. It's gonna make his wife very, very happy. Let's take a look, I'll demonstrate. So before we did the electric fuel pump conversion and some of the upgrades in the new carburetor. To start this vehicle, to get the fuel pumping, the engine literally had to be cranking. So what you had to do is one press of the accelerator pedal, which we'll do now. That sets the choke. And then you had to crank and crank and crank and crank and crank to bleed the system and get the vaporized today's crap gasoline out of it and fill the bowl back up and hopefully it would start. Now, this procedure is the same as far as one press of the gas pedal, but then we turn the key on. We don't crank the engine, we just turn the key on and you're gonna hear the pump run. You guys hear that? We are purging the system of all vapor, everything, and filling the fuel bowl as we sit. So I'll demonstrate. It will be one press of the gas pedal, turn on the key for literally five or ten seconds. Let it purge the lines. And then this thing starts amazing now. Watch this, guys. I don't even think the engine turned over one full revolution and it fired up instantly. I mean, right now. That is what they're looking for. They want to get in the car, start the car right now, and hit the road. No BS, no games, just go. And it will be able to do that now. So we have accomplished that for the customer. I'm very happy about that. Okay. So today's gasoline is way different than it was 20, 30, 40 years ago. We even see this at the marina where our Trojan yacht is docked. We've gotten to know several people in that little community there at the marina. One of them is actually a retired engineer from Standard Oil. He worked with the oil industry for many, many years. And I was talking to him about it one day, and he looked at me and said, Car Wizard, today's gas is almost nothing like it was in the 1950s, 60s, 70s, especially with lead, obviously. The lead's, there's no more lead. 
But there's different properties, different chemicals that they experiment with that they can add more of this, more of that, and make the gas cheaper to produce, and yet charge you guys the same amount. It still runs fine in a fuel-injected car, but these guys, these carbureted guys, they, they really don't like it. And we've seen it in some of the boats at the marina when they've been on a long, hot cruise on a hot day. They shut the engines off to go swimming and play and have a good time, and the engines vapor lock. It's like, I didn't have this problem when this boat was new, 1999, 2000, 2001. Over the last three or four years, these problems are prevalent all over the lake. It's the gasoline, guys. I, I don't know what we can do about it. But this has been solved. We've got this taken care of where now it will start up, even after sitting when the gas boils out of the carburetor, which it will. You can fill it up really fast, just turn the key on. We also have stable in the fuel to keep it fresh, so if it sits for all month and never gets driven, no problem. So those two problems have been solved. The other problem I haven't solved is finding time to get onto the 308. Come on, Wizard. I've gone back to school. I've got two jobs going now. I think you can pick up the pace. Yeah, I might have to. We have made some small progress on it, but it's not enough for a video. We're waiting till we get several small things together so we can show you guys around the car again and show you some of the upgrades and updates on it. We're getting there, guys. We're getting there. If you're curious what kind of tools we use to fix this cool little beetle, check my Amazon affiliates link in the description below. We get a small cut and we really appreciate it. Make sure to hit the subscribe button because the, that video is coming up, guys. I promise. Don't worry. Oh, and I forgot to say, Thanks for watching. I should have said thanks for watching. You didn't say thanks for watching. I'll come back and say that. Oh, and I forgot to say, thanks for watching.